Hello everyone, uh, welcome to this class. Uh, this class is on understanding the chemical vapor deposition. Okay. So, uh, we have seen physical vapor deposition. Now, let us see what are the chemical vapor deposition. Again, this is a thin film deposition technique and if you go to the next slide, <coughs> the problem with the physical vapor deposition as we have discussed uh, a few times is that the step coverage is poor hmm? because when you deposit the film using E beam operation or thermal operation right then uh, there is a, a geometrical shadowing effect which comes into picture and that is because both evaporation and sputtering have the directional fluxes. So, when it comes to uh, the step coverage right the context particularly when we need to make right if the lower you see here the contacts are not great. So, in that case the methods to minimize the step coverage problems are you can rotate you can rotate the uh, rotate and tilt the substrate what does it mean is if I have the uh, source which is in the bottom and wafer in the top right what I will do is I will rotate this wafer rotate this wafer while the deposition is in progress while the deposition is in progress I will rotate the wafer that will kind of minimize the problems of step coverage. The second is second way is that you can tilt this wafer a bit that means that instead of that you can put the wafer like this. Okay. So, where the steps are there you can try to cover those steps right by tilting the wafer. Hmm. So, that is one thing then second is elevate substrate temperature because then the reorientation of the uh, you know the, the deposited um, grains grains can reorient it. Uh, itself and at a higher temperature and that may improve the uh, step coverage problems or they may reduce the step coverage problems. And finally, use large area deposition source, if the source is bigger then the you can cover most of the step. The advantage of sputtering as we know right for multi component thin films sputtering gives better composition control using compound targets. Evaporation depends on vapor pressure or various vapor components and is difficult to control while in sputtering it is not so better lateral thickness uniformity you can get with sputtering superposition of multiple point targets is possible uh, and uh, uh, but when you call chemical vapor deposition or when you when talk about chemical vapor deposition then the conformability is way better than the PVD, the step coverage is way better than PVD and uh, that is because the uh, substrate is there the, the, the film is formed using chemical uh, reaction. So, chemical vapor expression if you want to define what is it done can you read CVD can provide better uniformity than PVD that we know. So, chemical vapor deposition is used frequently to deposit film where uniformity is an important condition is a critical condition. So, in CVD the precursors either appropriate uh, gas source or liquid source uh, with a bubbler either it is a, a gaseous reaction or it is a liquid source where the liquid source is evaporated into gaseous with the help of the bubbler and for liquid precursors nitrogen argon is generally used as a carrier gas. So, there is uh, you, you, you remember about the uh, bubbler that we talked about right in case of the uh, in case of the wet oxidation where you have the O2 and then there was a N2 and the N2 was going into the bubbler right and then it, it was taking the uh, water vapor uh, into the furnace right where we have kept the wafers you remember in wet oxidation. So, that was the uh, that is one example where the nitrogen is used to carry the water vapor into the uh, into the, uh, the furnace. But in case of CVD there are uh, carrier gas it is not about water vapor uh, this is water vapor because we were talking about SI plus H2O gives SiO2 plus 2H2 here 2 H2O. So, then this is the reason that we are talking about the water vapor, but in, in the case of CVD we are talking about different gases because we are creating um, a layer of different insulating material right layer of insulating material. So, that depends on what kind of carrier gases will mix uh, what is the reaction happening on the surface of the wafer and so on and so forth. So, uh, in this module we will look into <coughs> or understand uh, atmospheric pressure CVD 
low pressure chemical vapor deposition, plasma enhanced chemical vapor deposition and high density plasma chemical vapor deposition HDSPCVD. So, let us see the first one CVD as a glance right at a glance what you can see that uh, you have seen this thing this uh, image earlier during thermal oxidation thermal oxidation uh, class right. The main thing that you need to understand is that uh, the gas space reaction occurs and uh, there is a uh, transport uh, to the to the surface of the substrate where uh, there is there is forms of nucleation islands and step growth some are adsorbed some are readsorbed right uh, uh, and some are desorbed uh, so desorption adsorption readsorption and nucleation island and step growth that is how the chemical reaction occurs during the main flow that here uh, gas flow is there the gas reaction occurs on the substrate uh, which is silicon in most of the cases, but that can be other substrate as well. So, chemical gas sources are thermally opt optically or electrically activated to react with a surface to deposit uh, different layers and the byproducts are pumped out from the chamber. Uh, in a simplified model as gas flows over the substrate film growth is determined by the adsorption and reaction rates. So, however, in reality the desorption or the deposition rate is affected by the following parameters. The one is the radial variance, uh, specifics of the reactions and distance from the gas inlet. This all things are uh, 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 these are the parameters which will affect the deposition rate. The next is if how what are the tricks to improve the uniformity. One is you can tilt the uh, substrate uh, into a flow. Uh, increased temperature along the substrate and single vapor processing. If you have one vapor, you have better deposition. If you tilt the substrate, then you have so the, when the gas comes, right, you in, you can tilt the substrate like this. Okay, uh, uh, and then you can increase the temperature so the more chemical reaction occurs on the substrate. So these are some of the ways uh, to improve the uh, uniformity. So how many types of CVD? There are four types of CVD. How many types? Four types of CVD. And uh, the first one, which is atmospheric pressure CVD, we also call it as a AP CVD. The advantage is high deposition rate, it is simple and high throughput. The disadvantages are poor uniformity and purity is less than LP CVD. So, we will see advantage disadvantage. The low pressure CVD uh, is a, has an excellent uniformity and purity, however, the low deposition rates than AP CVD. If you talk about metal organic CVD, this is the highly flexible CVD that can deposit almost everything semiconductor, metal and dielectrics. The disadvantage is that it is highly toxic, very expensive source material and environmental disposal cost are extremely high. However, this is um, exclusively used for low optical uh, but not electronic uh, 3 to 5 uh, uh, technology, some metallization process like tungsten and copper. Uh, and while the uh, AP CVD generally used for thick oxide and LP CVD generally prefer when you want to uh, deposit polysilicon or dielectric uh, deposition and dope dielectric deposition. The, the final one which is plasma and CVD, so in this the plasmas are used to force reaction that would not be possible at low temperature. The advantage biggest advantage is use low temperature necessary for back end processing and plasma damage typically results used for dielectric coating. So, um, this is a disadvantage generally used for dielectric coating whether it is silicon dioxide or silicon nitride. So, you start with the AP CVD atmospheric pressure chemical vapor deposition is performed in a in a chamber at atmospheric pressure as the name suggests the reaction occurs at atmospheric pressure. Sticking coefficient of the product on substrate is very important to predict the coverage of the sur surface and filling of the trench. In low pressure system it becomes more important, low sticking coefficient leads to better coverage we, we, we know that right. Uh, few basic steps are involved in AP CVD. The first one is transport of reaction by force convection to deposition region, one is you have the gas then there is a force convection to the deposition region, transport reactants by diffusion from main gas stream through the boundary layer of the surface as you can see here right 
and then adsorption of the reactants on the wafer surface. Surface process includes chemical deposition or decomposition or reaction. Desorption of byproducts, right? Byproducts are desorbed and it will again be carried by the carrier gas. Finally, transfer of byproducts by diffusion to the boundary layer and back to the main gas stream and transfer of byproducts by force convection away from the chamber because the byproducts should not again come back uh, and react with the uh, uh, with the main gas flow and react again with the uh, substrate. So, they are forced with the force convection way we, we throw them out of the chamber uh, and we have to process these gases if they are harmful before letting it go into the atmosphere. So, uh, if you understand uh, in this particular manner then you have the uh, mass transfer which is given by Hg, you have uh, uh, the concentration of gas, uh, concentration of silicon and then you have flux 1, flux 2 this is a boundary layer between gas and silicon. So, CVD can be analyzed as a combination of two process mass transfer of reactants through the boundary layer and reaction at the interface of the deposited film surface. So, if R if you consider R as the rate of deposition and N is the number of atoms incorporated per unit volume in the film then we can define R equals to F by N which is K S C S into 1 by N which can be further given as H G K S by H G plus K S into C G by N where rate of reaction K S and mass transfer H G and the number of atoms incorporated per unit volume in the film controls the rate of deposition. So, that is what we need to understand rate of reaction that is of uh, obvious that K S is responsible mass transfer how much mass is transfer per unit volume in the film. So, in this case Hg uh, is not constant what is Hg if you remember Hg is the uh, mass transfer. So, that will not be constant over a region and you can see that uh, a completely stagnant boundary layer delta S exists uh, next to the surface of the wafer beyond the boundary the gas is well mixed and flow at constant velocity initially there is a flow right and then uh, this is actually the these are many what you call uh, uh, substrate in the one chamber 1, 2 and 3 right. The transfer of this uh, gas across this boundary layer occurs because of the diffusion right or via diffusion. Now, if you remember the Fick's law uh, at a steady condition F1 can be given as minus dg into del C by del X equals to dg by delta S into Cg minus Cs where dg is your diffusion coefficient delta S is con not constant throughout the chamber and uh, right next to the wafer sample the gas velocity is 0. You can see here uh, just next to the wafer sample the uh, gas velocity is 0 and the velocity gradually increases uh, to u within a boundary region. Uh, so, then <coughs> if you if your delta S uh, increases right along the length of susceptor the effective mass transfer coefficient decreases along the length of susceptor. So, at a, as the reaction gases are consumed to deposit the thin film or thin layer the concentration would decrease with distance along the susceptor. So, as you go on inside the chamber the kind of concentration they keep on decreasing and see the rate growth rate is proportional to partial pressure of the reactants the growth will also decrease downstream. So, uh, that is the reason why we keep it on tilted uh, angle and we, we keep the wafers a uh, little bit tilted and we also have a higher temperature as you can see in this particular case right. You see the tilt and uh, because the, the reactant flow like this and then in here it is a maximum one but if you tilt it then you have enough uh, area for reaction. As reacting gases are consumed to deposit thin layer the concentration decreases with distance as you go further in the chamber the concentration decreases. Since growth rate is proportional to the partial pressure of reactants the growth rate will also decrease downstream and to compensate boundary layer variation and depletion effect reactor geometry is modified. So, what is the modification to, to decrease in the cross section of chamber causes gas velocity to increase. So, as you go further the kind of cross section of the chamber uh, decreases and to compensate the depletion effect a temperature gradient is imposed increasing from front to back right. So, from front to back the there is change in the temperature uh, the deposition layer can be doped during the deposition, but if a large concentration gradient of dopant exists in chamber at high temperature due to solid state diffusion unwanted doping may happen. So, you can dope it, but uh, uh, 
uh, again depends on the optimization parameters. Uh, auto doping process includes the wafer front side, wafer back side, other wafers from susceptor. If there is an initial uh, chemical gases, if you do not uh, uh, you know uh, let the all the gases come out from the chamber, the, the there can be a, a previous uh, uh, gases present that may again react. Uh, the the uh, there can be auto doping which is unwanted doping uh, that uh, that is possible in this particular case. So we have seen APCVD. Uh, uh, in the next class, let us see the other types of CVD. Um, uh, in in general, like I said, right, all CVDs has its own advantages and disadvantages. Particularly APCVD, which we have seen right now, uh, the advantage is high deposition rate. So, if you want to grow the materials faster, right, thick oxide, you can go for APCVD. Uh, it is very simple technique to grow silicon dioxide or an insulating material. Uh, the difficulty here is only the poor uniformity and purity. So, let us see the other CVDs in the next class. Till then, you take care. I will uh, continue in the next class. Uh, just let us get uh, understanding about what are the CVDs and how they can be uh, utilized. I uh, will see you in the next class, bye for now.